Hey there, I'm Source Make, and welcome to the Hyperledger Composer Introduction and Playground Tutorial. And in this video, we are going to go over what Hyperledger Composer is. We're going to go over some key terminology and concepts in Hyperledger Composer. And this is important because we're going to go over some file types and keywords that you need for the programming languages in Composer. And we'll use an example so you know how all this works. Then we are going to go over some demo code that shows actually how you would make an example blockchain using Hyperledger Composer. Then we're going to deploy that code onto the playground. And this is going to be all online in the web browser. There's going to be no installation in this video. So anyone can follow along. Even if you're not really a developer, it's going to be so easy that you can actually do this yourself. So what you're going to do is you're going to watch me do this video. You're going to see me explain everything. And then you're going to click the link to this website. And, and there are going to be instructions so that you can try this yourself. And I wrote this really so that you can follow along and do this yourself. So the link to this page where you can do this yourself is going to be right here below this video. Below this video is going to be a link. You click it, you get to this page and try this yourself. And while you're down there, hit the subscribe button for this YouTube channel. Thanks. So this isn't our first rodeo. This isn't our first Hyperledger video. We also have a blog post on Hyperledger Aroha and we have a blog post and video on Hyperledger Fabric. So if you want to try those, go ahead and click those links. But in this video, we're going to be doing Hyperledger Composer. And Composer is a tool that helps you easily create blockchain networks. It's all about blockchain. And the best way to think about Composer is that if you want to make your own custom blockchain for your own thing, and it's going to be really simple, you really just need to define who's going to be using the blockchain and what they're going to be trading or creating on the blockchain, then Composer is a tool for you. You define those people or items and your blockchain can be ready with really minimal code. It's, it's so simple. And Composer is actually much easier to use than Fabric. Personally, you, for Fabric, you kind of need to know everything that's going on. And you have more control for, um, in Fabric because of that. But Composer is just like, if you just want a quick start, Composer is so good for you. So that's why it's important to know. With that said, let's go over some Composer terminology and concepts. And for this, we're going to have an example. So we own a fast food restaurant and we sell customers food and the customers buy food from us. And maybe there's some other fast food restaurants on the blockchain besides our own restaurant. Seems simple, right? So let's go through 12 things that you need to know if you want to use Composer. A participant on the blockchain is a person that can own something or perform an action. So in our restaurant example, this could be the manager for our restaurant, could be a cook that makes the food, a cashier that, you know, does the transactions, takes money from customers and gives them the food, or it could even be the customer itself that lives on the blockchain. That did just something, just a person. An asset is just an item of value. Now in our example, this could be a burger or french fries or even money that, you know, we just try to model those assets on the blockchain, anything that gets traded. Speaking of that, a transaction is when some participants create new assets or they trade assets. So for example, a customer gives us money and we give them food. That's a transaction. Or a chef makes new burgers so they bring new burgers into the blockchain system. That's a transaction. That's a great way to think about it. Now, anytime one of those transactions happens, sometimes we want to emit an event so that people know what's going on in the blockchain. An event is broadcast that so everybody knows what's going on. And a CTO file now is just a file type with the extension .CTO. And that's where we declare the models for all of our participants, assets, transactions, and events. You need to define what these are and the CTO file is where you do that. And we'll see an example of that, so don't get too scared about that. It's actually really simple. No, a transaction function. But remember that this is all being done on a computer, so you need to write some code that actually, you know, makes this stuff happen. And some JavaScript code is just what you will write to actually carry out the logic for each transaction. Really simple, we'll be seeing how that works. An ACL file is something we're not going to be doing, but it's necessary. So it's just a file extension, and this is where we put the rules for what our participants can or cannot do or access. Now, for example, Maybe a manager for our restaurant can order some beef from a farm if we're running low on beef for our restaurant, but the cashier doesn't have that permission. You know, that's just something that you declare in the ACL file. Who can do what? Really simple. So continuing on, the asset registry is actually the place where or the storage where our data lives. So remember, all of these numbers are the things that are going on. For example, how many burgers does our restaurant have right now? You would look that up in the place called the asset registry. That's just a place in the blockchain where all the stuff is stored. And basically, we use this in transaction function. So next thing is get factory, which is just a method of function. And you call this in your code anytime you want to create a new asset, event, participant, or transaction. 
And we'll see an example of this, so don't worry too much about it. Just know that it exists and that we're going to be using it. Now, a namespace is a little bit important. Basically, it's the way you organize things into groups. So for example, maybe our restaurant is called Source Make Restaurant, so that's what we want our namespace to be. But another restaurant in the system, maybe Hyperledger Restaurant, would have a different type of namespace or, or hierarchy of what they would name their stuff, just, just for organization purposes. So for example, the cashiers in our restaurant would be under the name say source make restaurant dot cashiers because that's just, you know, the hierarchy of they're part of our restaurant and they're cashiers, so that's where they live in this hierarchy. And this is a good way just to organize, you know, who can access what and, you know, how you would do things. So next are queries, and queries are SQL-like statements written to search for how many assets the participant has. Now you have to remember, we're talking about things on blockchain. Now blockchain are just like nodes that live on people's computers and are spread out and decentralization and all that. But what happens if you actually want to look up a value, like how many burgers a restaurant has? How would you actually do that, you know, from outside the blockchain system? Well, you, queries are basically where you write these SQL statements so that you could look up these values outside for like websites or APIs or anywhere else you want to access the blockchain. Remember when you architect this stuff, you want to access the data, you, you're going to write some queries to do that. We're not going to be going over those, but I have this link here that you can actually, you know, read yourself if you are actually building your own blockchain network. And finally, a business network definition is where you take all our models for the assets, participants, transactions, and events. You take all our JavaScript files for our transaction functions. You take our ACL file with all our rules and permissions. You take our query files, which are going to, you know, have our queries for whatever we want to access outside of the blockchain network. You bundle all those up, and that's our business network definition. And that creates what's called a business network archive, which is just the file type. And once you have that, you can, you know, you have your blockchain, you can deploy it to Fabric or, you know, a browser or anything else like that. It's just you bundle up all these file types and you get your business network definition because that defines what our blockchain actually is. So that should have been really simple. Hopefully it was. If not, you can, you know, you'll learn more as you go along. But we're going to look at some demo code just to see how this actually works. And continuing on with our restaurant example, we're going to define our stuff in this CTO file. Now you can see the first thing in our file is this namespace and we have, so I personally have a restaurant, so that's how this is going to be organized like this. And that's just our namespace for this file. Now you can see the first thing that we define is a participant and it's going to be a cook for our restaurant. And you see this identified by employee ID. That means each cook is going to have a unique employee ID that represents them. And you can see two fields here, two strings. And one field is the employee ID, which again is going to, every employee is going to have their own ID. And we're also going to have a string that defines the first name of that employee. So the next thing you see is an asset, which is just going to be for our purposes, a burger asset. And it's going to be identified by the asset ID, which, you know, just each type of our burger is going to have our own ID. For example, our, our cheeseburgers are going to have the asset ID of cheeseburger. It's just a string that defines what the asset is going to be you know, defined by, and we're going to have a quantity, which is an integer that just represents how many burgers of this type we have at any given time. And then we have this little weird arrow thing here. And, and let's think about this for a second. Do you know in like other programming languages how there are classes and objects and a class is really just, you know, a definition, a template, a blueprint for an object. So anytime you want to have a specific object, you would instantiate a version of that class and that object is an instance of the class. Like for example, you have an animal class and you instantiate an object of like a giraffe or something like that. This is kind of similar. So you see, we have this definition of a participant cook, but when we actually have our blockchain, we're going to take this kind of template and we're going to actually create a cook and we're going to give them employee ID and a first name. This arrow here means that this resource is going to be related to a specific instance of a cook. So for example, we're going to be defining a cook named Billy. And that means anytime we have a burger asset for our restaurant, they're going to be, you know, related to one specific cook, not just this abstract function, but the actual cook on the blockchain who actually owns them. And in our case, it's going to be Chef Billy, who's going to be owning all of our burger assets. So keep that in mind. That's what these arrow functions means. It means it's going to be related to a specific instance of a, uh, of a definition, not just the actual, you know, code. 
Next, you'll see we have this transaction defined here called make burgers. And again, it's going to be related to a specific burger asset. It's going to be related to our cheeseburgers in our example. So every time we have a cheeseburger, we're going to define a new burger count. And we're going to see how this transaction function works. We're just going to define what we need to make this transaction happen. It's going to be easier in the demo. Don't worry about it. And finally, an event. Anytime we make fresh burgers, we want to emit an event and let people know, hey, there are more burgers on the system. And this is going to be related to a specific burger asset. Maybe we have more cheeseburgers in the system. Maybe we have more, I don't know, chicken burgers on the system. So you have to relate that to a specific type of burger to let people know. And we have two integers here, how many burgers there were before, how many burgers there are now. So I know that's a lot to take in. We'll see how that works later. We're going to look at just the specific transaction function that we have. And you see the first thing here is we define that we're going to look for this. This transaction function is an ASIC JavaScript function named make burgers. It's going to tra take in this transaction object. But it's related to cob that source make restaurant that make burgers. So remember, this parameter is going to say, hey, okay, we're going to look at the namespace com source make restaurant, and we're going to look at this specific transaction to see what this transaction object is going to have. So these things are related. This parameter is going to be related to this specific model. And in this transaction function, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the old burger count. And we're going to update that quantity for the old burger count with the new burger count, which again is something that we defined right here in the transaction. So, so we're going to be passing this number into the transaction. It's going to use that to update the burger count. And then we are going to update the asset registry because remember all this stuff, all these numbers live in the asset registry. So we need to update it there. So the, the function is going to do that. And then we're going to emit an event just, just to let everyone know that, hey, there are some new cheeseburgers or so, some type of burger in the system. Let everyone know that this happened. And, and you know, that's just good practice. So you should know how that works. So that's kind of, I know that was a little vague and, and maybe it doesn't make sense, but we're going to go through the online playground right now to show you how this works. So let me just make this into like two files right here. So we have like this. I don't know why that resize like this. And I just want to keep this tab open. And what we're going to do is we're going to click this link to go to the playground tutorial online. The playground, you know, I'm sorry, the composer online playground. And we're going to load this page. It's taking a second to load, but it's taking a while to load. Come on, come on, load. Okay. Here it is. So we're going to click Let's Blockchain, and it's a little bit hard to see. Let me make it a bit bigger. We're going to click this Deploy a New Network. They have this example here, but we're going to make our own network with it, just so you know what's going on. Now, we're going to name this business network, Source Make Restaurant Network, like that. And all this other stuff is fine. You can see that there are some example templates right here that you can go through if you want to see more examples. But we're going to create an empty business network and fill this in ourselves for our example. We're going to click deploy and now you see that it shows up right here because it says source make restaurant network. So we're going to click the connect now button and we can see right here is where we're going to be playing, literally playing with. So here's where a readme file would be and the first thing that we want to do is actually go to our model file. Now they have this blank model file but we want to delete this and we want to add our own model file that we defined right here. So I'm going to copy this in, copy, paste it in and everything looks good. We went over this code already. The next thing that we need to do is define our transaction function because this transaction exists here, but we need to add our JavaScript code, right? So we're going to add a file and you can see right here, it's going to be a script file, JavaScript file. We're going to click this add button and we're going to delete this and we're going to add our custom code that we have right here. And you'll be doing this yourself after you watch me do this in the video. So make sure you continue watching and you should try this yourself since it's so simple. So everything looks good. And right here, there's this access file that's already defined for us. So, you know, we don't need to do anything. We're going to click this deploy changes button and that actually deploys our blockchain. So for all intents and purposes, our blockchain is deployed out, out onto the world. So what we want to do now is we want to test it because obviously you have to test to see if it works. So we're going to click this test tab. There's a define tab where you define the network and then this test tab where you actually test things out. And we'll see right here. Can I make it a little bigger for you? Here it is. So there are three tabs here, the participants tab, the assets tab, and the transactions tab, which we care about. 
you see right here that we are in the participants tab and we define that there is a cook asset, right? So what we want to do is we want to create our own custom cook. We, maybe we hired someone and we want to add them to the blockchain because now we have a cook in our restaurant. So we're going to copy this right here. And I have this on the web page. You can, you'll be following the instructions yourself. But what we do is we click this button, create new participant. We're going to, oh, we're going to delete this and we're going to add our custom code. And let's look at it really quickly. We are saying that this cook belongs to a source make restaurant. The cook namespace, we talked about that. We're going to give him an employee ID of 1111. And his first name is Chef Billy. That just happens to be his name. So, so he's the cook for our restaurant. You can see that right here. We're going to press the, let me make this a little bit smaller. We're going to press create new button. And now the cook exists on our network. Chef Billy is successfully added to our blockchain. Well, now that he's here, we need to make some burgers. And Chef Billy is really good at making cheeseburgers. So we're going to just copy this code right here, this JSON, a little script that's going to define our burger asset. We're going to click the Assets tab now. And we're going to have Chef Billy create some cheeseburgers. So we're going to create a new asset. And just to initialize a, a, the cheeseburger, we're basically going to write it on the menu of our board, let people know that they can buy cheeseburgers from us now. So this is going to belong to com, source make, restaurant, burger asset. That's going to be the namespace. The asset ID is a string that's going to be cheeseburger because this is going to represent our cheeseburgers. And remember, we defined an owner for this. Remember that arrow function that we had before. So this owner is going to belong to the resource. We're going to actually have to look up the resource here. And it's going to belong to the cook whose ID number is one 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 which we know is chef billy we're accessing it by his unique employee id which is good for us so so we need to know that and we're going to start out with five cheeseburgers that we have in the restaurant so we're going to click create new and now we have a restaurant with a cook named chef billy and we have these cheeseburgers and we have five of them but let's say we want to make chef billy make more burgers let's say we want to have that transaction happen and we want to let people know well, we can submit a new transaction by clicking that button. And there's only one transaction type that we have defined right now, that's make burgers. So we're going to copy this JSON right here. From here, we're going to delete what's here and copy our custom JSON. And you can see right here that the um, transaction that we're going to be doing is comp, source make, restaurant, make burgers, because that's the namespace. You need to have that syntax down packed. The burger type that we're going to have, remember, this was also an arrow function. So we're making, we're, we're talking about a specific burger instance. And in this case, we're looking at source make restaurants, burger assets, and the ID is the cheeseburgers, because that's the one that we're going to be making. And the new burger count after we have everything all said and done is 10. So Chef Billy is whipping up five new burgers, because that's the rate he does it at. And there's going to be 10 burgers at the end of everything. So what we want to do is we want to press submit and the transaction happens. You see that this number updated to 10. And if you look at all transactions, you can go right here and you review the record. And you see the historian is going to keep track of all transactions for our blockchain. And we see that this transaction did happen. We have a timestamp and transaction ID. We see all the details. And we can even see that the em event was emitted because that's what we defined in our code. And like that, we, we basically did everything for blockchain. You, you test your network on this. Um, you know, the playground and, and you set up your custom, you know, models for your participants, assets, transactions, events, and you write your transaction functions to update everything in the asset registry and emit your events and update any assets that you need to. And that's it. Using Composer, you know, we have our own blockchain for our restaurant. And of course, it gets a little more complex. Maybe in future videos, we will be doing some, you know, um, I want to do another video on native fabric development versus composite development. And I want to make more cre um, complex network with more participants as its transactions. But if you can do this, if you do this stuff yourself, you can play with composer yourself and make your own blockchain, like literally like that. It's that simple. So um, that's been composer. I'm source to make, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you can see more videos like this. Make sure you like this video so that I know that this is the type of content you like. Comments telling me what you want to see in the future. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll try to answer them. And that's Hyperledger Composer. You can do it yourself now. So thanks for watching. Make sure you do subscribe and yeah, happy composing.